Saladin Saladin was a Muslim warrior born in the year 1138 AD in the city Tikrit in what we now call Egypt. He slew so many Christians during his lifetime that there is no recording of the number, but we do know that it had a profound and arresting effect on the spread of Christian teachings in the East. It was well known in the East that Jesus did not teach Christianity, but was a prophet of Islam. The infidels of Europe used his name as a shield for their false teachings. His name means honor of the faith in Arabic. He was the first sultan of Egypt. After 1104 AD, the Seljuk Empire had been greatly subdivided among Turkish Atabegs, warlords. For this reason, the major part of Saladin's lifetime was a period of many battles and was partly responsible for the great loss of Christian lives. He was a black man born of the tribe of Kurd or Armenia. His father's name was Ayub and his uncle's was Shurgu. Both of these were generals in the army of Zengi, who was an Atabeg of Mosul. Saladin went to school at the famous center of learning at Mosul under Nuruddin. In 1139 AD, when Saladin was a year old, Zengi gave his father Ayub the city of Balbek, which made Ayub now an Atabeg also. At that time, Nuruddin was the supreme captain of all armies and this gave Saladin a great opportunity to observe the techniques of warfare, for both Ayub and Shurgu were close friends of Nuruddin. In 1154 AD, when Saladin was 16 years of age, he led an army in conquest of Damascus, then the capital of Greece. From 1164 AD to 1174 AD, his time was spent running out and killing all the Christians that had come into Egypt causing confusion and mischief among the righteous. He also laid the foundation for the reunion of Egypt into one country. Egypt at that time consisted of many states and districts and encompassed a great portion of the Middle East. Between 1174 AD and 1186 AD Egypt had annexed Syria and Mesopotamia. When Saladin began his campaign in Egypt at the age of 26, he was appointed by Shurgu as lieutenant to Egypt. It was during this time that the Europeans were sending hordes of men, just recently out of the caves, into the east to capture the Holy Land in the name of Christ. They were known as the Crusaders and the Pope was their supreme commander. In the five years that passed between 1164 AD to 1169 AD Christians saw defeat after defeat and the battleground was strewn with their corpses. Their heads were piled in huge pyramids and the news would climb to the summit and chant the call to prayer. This was the period when Saladin's warriors became known as the Saracens, Saracen. This word came to strike fear into the hearts of the Europeans and even the English monarch Richard III, the Lionhearted. In 1171 AD, Shergu died of natural causes and this put Saladin into the position of vizier with the title Al-Malik Al-Nasser. Supreme Captain Nuruddin died in 1174 AD. All Islam after that became one group lead by Saladin. The Muslims no longer fought against one another over petty grievances or tribal disputes, but they became strongly unified and rode to battle under one banner the Star and the Crescent. They turned all of their forces against the infidels who were invading their homeland, and surely did the heads fly. From 1177 AD to 1180 AD Saladin took every Christian head in Syria. At one time he even captured the King of England, Richard, and held him for a large ransom. He destroyed Christian army after Christian army sent against him and his name was the cause of panic among the unbelievers. He cleansed the entire area surrounding Syria of the Europeans. Then for seven years Saladin enjoyed peace to an extent until May of 1187 AD when Reynard, the Fox, Chatillion of France started the spread of Christianity again and led more crusaders into the Holy Land. But this was another defeat for the Christians, and in September of the same year Saladin's army ran through Palestine. On October the 2nd, Jerusalem was rid of all Christians. Throughout all of his life Saladin was noted for his generosity and hospitality towards his brothers and sisters in Islam. He loved children, was honest, and chivalrous to women and elderly people. He was looked upon as one of the greatest champions in Islam. He possessed the Oriental's power of endurance and always led the charge into battle with his scimitar gleaming in the sun and causing the heads of the infidels to fly into the air. 
He fought many single hand-to-hand -hand combats with the enemy, but none of the European knights had a chance during battle, but in peace he was a sympathetic and kind benefactor. With all the admirable qualities he possessed there was no doubt that he was an upright and righteous Muslim, for he could not possess such qualities except from Allah, the Most High. It would seem that because of all his battles and conquests and merciless raids against the Christians, he would become hard and lose all feelings of love and compassion for his brothers and become fierce and tyrannical in his rule, the way most latter-day conquerors have become, but instead his goodwill and righteousness increased. When he died in 1193, he died a man who had accomplished what his God, Almighty Allah, had commanded unto him and made possible for many generations to come to live in harmony and peace without the threat of the unbelievers in the land that Allah had chosen for them. He made possible for them to acknowledge a religion which was suitable for these lands and cultures without interference from those who worshipped another strange and alien god. Seven centuries later Napoleon Bonaparte of France was to send a message to the Muslim army asking most humbly if they would assist him by taking part in an attack on a particularly difficult European country, so much did he admire their courage and superior knowledge.